Welcome to the studio. This might look familiar. We're about to go over the newest machine from Artillery, the Sidewinder X4 Plus S1. Now, you might be wondering, didn't Artillery just release the Sidewinder X4 Plus not too long ago, right? But here it is again, and you'd be right, but this is the new S1 version, and it brings a few key upgrades that might improve the overall user experience, maybe? And most notably, they removed the uh, bed leveling knobs, making it all automatic. Kind of nice. There are actually quite a few upgrades to this particular model, so today we're going to explore what's changed, how these updates improve the printing experience, and whether it's worth the upgrade from the original X4 Plus. And I'll have my original X4 Plus video linked in the description if you're interested in watching a little bit more on Artillery's X4 series. Now let's start with what's new. And first, let me give some props to Artillery for making these changes. They're listening to the community and they're adapting. And that's exactly what we want, and I kind of wish we would see a lot more of that. The Sidewinder X4 Plus S1 is the new release, and since they aren't producing the original X4 Plus anymore, it's hard to say, and because this is the new one, I guess we'll just call it the X4 Plus from here on out. The X4 Plus retains the same awesome helmet class build volume of 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters, and it's a solid all-metal frame braced as you'd expect and it has several other additional upgrades the bed leveling knob removal as i mentioned earlier before that's one of the major changes and that was to eliminate uh the ability for people to just mess up and have to be manually uh leveling that build plate um, all the time so the automatic 121 point auto leveling system is pretty nice and it means that even you know novices or experts are going to come along they're just going to be able to hit print and get a result and, and not have to be fussing with knobs anymore. Um, input shaping is different. So they've added this little input shaping module and it's gonna help reduce vibrations during prints and uh, it's gonna ultimately lead to you know cleaner, sharper prints and you just basically set that on each axis and then run the calibration. Now, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a moment, but uh, they also did a Y-axis belt upgrade and they strengthen the y-axis belt, which improves, of course, the durability and accuracy um, of that axis. And it's going to make it a little bit more precise. And it's going to ultimately affect larger prints more than smaller. But it's a good upgrade nonetheless. Now, there is a new firmware update. Um, I think it's a 1.5 is the latest. And it's available for download on the Artillery website. And the update, it goes through and optimizes several of the performance aspects of the printer. So you're going to want to go ahead and uh, do that anyway. Even if you didn't have this machine, you should always stay at the latest firmware to have all the features, but uh, that is one of the features with this machine. Now, they also upgraded the nozzle silicone uh, sock on the machine, and it was designed basically to prevent it from falling off and coming into contact with prints, and that was an issue that was reported with people um, with the original X4 Plus. So that's a good thing. Now, why do these changes really matter? Right, So the removal of the bed leveling knobs and the switch to fully automatic leveling, um, it makes the new X4 Plus a lot more user friendly, especially for beginners. Now, not having to manually adjust the bed saves a lot of time and it saves a lot of frustration, uh, while the improved Y-axis belt and vibration compensation are just going to help you produce better prints and at faster speeds. Now, the industry is definitely moving away from manual operations as far as possible. And it's all about the user experience and it's about appealing to as wide an audience as possible. And if a 3D printer company can reduce the number of places where novices trip themselves up, then it's better for the industry in general. Now, how does it compare to the original X4 Plus? When it comes to print quality, the new X4 Plus produces some great print results. Now, the original also produced fantastic print results, and if you want to see a direct head-to-head -head comparison, that will be coming in a future video, so make sure you're subscribed. And uh, hit that like button too. That helps out a lot. Like, a lot. I'm interested, really, to see just how much of a difference the changes did make. So maybe I'll throw a print on each one of them, slice it exactly the same, and we'll see what comes out. Prints are still pretty crisp. They're detailed and consistent. However, with the addition of input shaping, it looks like it has improved things a little bit, which is to be expected. Now, I'm not a fan of printers that are hard coding input shaping data. They need to be included with every single printer. And ideally, I'd prefer these to be permanently mounted on each axis, but this one isn't so bad. But let's start getting them mounted um, permanently in future machines. It's just a good idea. It has the same 300C hot end and 100C heat bed, which allow you to print a wide range of filaments. So it's gonna be the same as the previous machine. 
it's going to be meant for PLAs, CPUs, PTGs, um, and you can print ABS as long as you're getting some adhesive uh, down on that build plate. It is also one of the fastest rated large bed slingers with print speeds up to 500 millimeters per second and 10,000 millimeters per second squared acceleration. Now, you won't be printing helmets anywhere close to those speeds, but this machine is definitely still a quick one. You're likely going to be printing things around 200 to 300 millimeters per second, and especially with large prints on a build plate like this. Okay, now let's break it down. Here are the pros. Again, fully automatic bed leveling. So the removal of the manual bed leveling knobs uh, was crucial, and that's gonna make this new X4 Plus much easier to use. The input shaping, which they call it vibration compensation, that is going to improve print quality um, and reliability uh, with the machine. So less ringing and uh, yeah, all around better. And of course, the Y-axis belt upgrade was just an important upgrade. I think that's just going to make the machine uh, produce better quality prints. Um, again, like I said, in even on taller ones. And the firmware, being the new 1.5 firmware, has all of the auto bed leveling and takes into account um, all the changes that they made. So definitely, um, that is a benefit. Silicone nozzle sleeve. Yeah, that's, that's important. I think that's a little less important because um, you can always remove a sock. They don't have to be on there, but it is good that they redesigned it so it's not falling off onto your prints and causing problems. Okay, and now for the cons. The price is 369 and it's slightly more expensive than the original by about, I think about 20 or $30, but I suppose that really doesn't matter now, actually, because the old one is gone and this is the new one. So there it is, that's your price. So 369 is the price for the machine. Manual leveling preference, I've asked the community a few times about their preferences for this, and although the majority is really for automatic bed leveling, there are still some users that prefer manual control over their bed leveling, and a lot of them talk about how they would like to manually level the build plate and get it as close to perfect as possible, and then let the automatic kick in. So um, that is just a preference. Now, I would have preferred, for another con, to have input shaping, um, permanently attached to the X and Y axis. It's not a deal breaker, but I really hope that that's a consideration in the future from artillery. The X4 Plus is primarily focused on those of you who want to print helmets or other large models and have the high-speed option available. You'll want to subscribe because we're going to be printing some helmets on this one and uh, really cranking some helmets out and showing just how far the tech has come. Where helmets used to take us 100 plus hours to print, now we'll be cranking them out in less than 20 hours. And I do want to mention that the setup and first print experience is actually pretty good with this machine. It will be good for both novices and experts and ideally I could see this in a print farm for helmets or other large cosplay items. It's a pretty good machine. So far, it's been pretty reliable. At 369, this is a pretty impressive 3D printer. It's blowing my mind, actually, at just how fast and far the industry's come in the last year. It's almost unbelievable to not only have a helmet class machine at this particular price point, but a clipper machine that's fully loaded. I mean, seriously, times have changed. I mean, it feels not too long ago that we were just at the, what, Sidewinder X2, crazy. Now, let me know in the comments below if you have the original X4 Plus, and uh, if you're planning on upgrading or, or if these changes don't matter to you. Um, or of course, if this is going to be your first helmet class machine, uh, let me know. Yeah, in the comments below. Sometimes these are weird to do because I've already done this machine before. And this is just like, a, like an iterative update. And I don't know, I feel like it's important to cover it because this is going to be the new X4 Plus. So the people buying this machine today, this is what you get. Um, and so, but it's like, it's like deja vu mixed with like this internal feeling of like, are people watching going to be interested in seeing a second video on it, even though it's so similar. But then I also know that there's new people coming along that didn't see the other one that will only see this one. So it's a, it's a strange thing to do some of these iterative updates and, and this isn't the only one. We have more of these coming. There's, there's a lot of 3D printer manufacturers that are rolling out just minor upgrades to their printers. And again, like I said earlier uh, in, the, in the main content, we, I, I kind of wish that there was more of that, that more companies were doing that. So it is inspiring uh, that, that we have a handful of companies that are trying to listen to the community and they're really trying to update uh, these printers and just make them better. Um, I tell you, the out-of-box experience for these things is changing. Now, I didn't assemble this new one. Um, my oldest son, Van, did. And uh, matter of fact, we'll, we'll try and put his YouTube channel on the screen and in the description. You should go check it out. Um, he's doing fantastic. Um, but he actually assembled this one. And, uh, he, I mean, it's, they're very simple. 
And, uh, but now these machines are just so powerful and they're so reliable and the print results are incredible. So, um, you will have already seen B roll of the print quality coming off of this machine. And of course, again, if you want to go see the original, um, which kind of covers a lot more about artillery in the machine, um, yeah, it's in the description. Go check it out. All right. Anyway, thanks for watching.